Hello and welcome back to this training on uh, mesh and using open phone technology. So this is lecture two. This is again theory. Remember, if you're already familiar with this, you can go ahead and skip this lecture. Okay, this is just uh, this is a little bit theory, but if you're not familiar, you want a refresher, just uh, stay with us. So basically, let's talk about this input dictionary. So, so far, we haven't opened anything, okay? But just to show you what you're going to, to encounter if you're entirely new, if you're, you already have done some mission, you know what we're talking about. So you have this Snappy X mesh, and basically it's divided, uh, Snappy X mesh input file or dictionary is divided in five sections. Geometry, where you read geometry, castellation, where you control all the Cartesian meshing, refinement, surface and region refinement, and also feature refinement, not just those chart angles. It's not controlled, body fitted meshes, and boundary layer, okay, where you add boundary layers. So you only add prismatic elements here, okay? You grow that inflation layer, and then during the whole pro process of castellation, snapping, and um, layers, you always control, or snappy always control, controls mesh quality controls. I have to say something that these steps they can do independently. So you can do just the castellation, see if you like it, then restart and from the castellation now do the snapping and then after you have the snap mesh you can add the boundary layer and iterate until you get now the your, your right boundary layer okay so we're going to see how to do that okay but these uh, steps they are uh they're independent okay so i think this is quite handy so basically when you read all your 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 snappy x mesh file you have these auctions so or these blocks and see here that at the beginning you're going to have this keyword so you can turn turn off or on that option so if you don't want to do a snapping and boundary layer put here false false just do the castellation and so on so for the moment my advice always keep castellation and a snap to true and if you want you can put a layer false meaning that you don't want to add the boundary layer because that can be done in a independent step now it can be done in an iterative way and we're going to see how to do that so here you did read the geometry there are very specific ways to do it keywords and so on so hopefully i'm going to give you, you know that uh that template okay castellation controls snapping controls and mesh quality controls okay so very important i already mentioned that we don't have a gui here or at least an officially supported gui okay there are a few open source you no know, a gui or commercial guis you can use then okay there is no problem but officially supported there is nothing so that can be a little bit intimidating not doing the meshing because this input file can be very very uh complicated you can have many keywords and actually the last time i checked there were more than 70 parameters that you could that you you could change here so that is very confusing I want to stress, I'm not going to address all the parameters and I'm going to only address the most important ones. Then the rest, I have to say that probably you can use the default values, okay, what is distributed with this open phone, or you can do some trial and error to get an idea, but I'm going to focus just on the important stuff. So talking about geometry, this is how you read it, okay, so you're going to counter something like this. No going into details here, but you read your STL or can be OBJ. Okay, that STL can be divided into regions. So this is a little bit complicated because you have regions. If you don't have regions, don't put this one. So it's very straightforward. You also have geometrical entities, meaning that within a snappy, you can create boxes, spheres, cylinders, and so on. Or you can read a second STL to create, for instance, a box to do a region refinement, okay? So you have these options, okay? So we're going to see that. Uh, then let me move a little bit here. Then Castellation, you have many global controls, okay? I'm not going to address all the parameters. Remember, most important ones of this one, I consider that the most important one is this one, end cells between levels. So this is between levels, okay? When you change from level one to two, it will add three cells, okay? So this is kind of how you control the growth rate. It's not a perfect growth rate because it's always two to one, but you can add more transitions. So use it as a good idea to have a good buffer layer there. Then also important, this keyword. So here you are limiting your, your mesh to be two millions, 
Okay, so be careful because you have two million, sometimes you want to have something larger, it will always stop at two million. So this is just to control the memory management. Remember that it can grow up very fast. Then you have many more options. Okay, here you control the edges, you capture edges, so see features, you compute this one using this tool called surface features. We're going to see how to do it. And then you say add a refinement level of two here in the edges that you capture that clearly see there. Then in the surfaces also, you have a surface that you read and see that you have global parameters and then you have local parameters. This is a little bit complicated probably because you have regions. Later, we're going to define that because in this STL, you can also split the STL into different objects or faces. Okay, so here I'm telling in this region, add a refinement to four. So two global four is curvature. So whatever you have more curvature or you have intersections, add a refinement of four that you see here, 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 here. Okay, then this is how you control how to add this region, buff, buffer. So don't pay attention to this. This is just to show off, if I may say that. Then refinement region. So you see that first features, edges then surface and then you have volume region so here we have a volume region this box that was created here remember you give a name here and this is how you access that local object and then that box and telling inside the box put a refinement level of one and you have it clearly here then very important how do you remove the cells here see that you have this keyword here location in mesh so if you put this point inside the STL, it's going to remove no the cells there. If you put it outside, it's going to remove those cells. So this is just that you can control. If you have multiple STL, also you have a multiple location mesh. I don't recall the proper name, but there are many options. So this is how things uh, work here, okay? So let's move here. Okay, so well, talking about this point, very important. Now this is how how you you control that. Uh, a tip here that avoid to put this this point on no, on the surface. Otherwise, you are not going to get anything. No, I think it's quite difficult to to put exactly on the surface. No. So as I say, this define where do you want the mesh. So if you put it inside or outside, you're going to get that that mesh. Then you go a snap controls, and here you have these options now to control the snapping to the surface. So castellation, this is a valid uh, mesh, but if you wanna body fit it, you go like this. And these are the options to control the snapping. I'm not going to details. I'm just going to to tell you that. For me, these are my default values, okay? But then later I'm going to show you a second option, okay? So if you don't get something nice, you can go and change to the other values, improved value. But this is just to control all the, the, the snapping of this auction. Probably the most important ones are the ones related you know, to, to the uh, iterations. Now you iterate until you get a good mesh. Then the final option is act layers. You know? The final block, you add the boundary layer. So this is how you control. As you can see, I'm only showing you the most important ones, auctions, but there are many auctions. So my advice is use these default values of all these auctions values. The probably the most important one is this one. So later we're going to see specific cases where you will see that influence. And here is how you control the boundary layer. So there are many options. So you add at these walls, you add three layers, then you can change expansion ratio. So here in boundary layer, you can control the growth rate or expansion ratio. Instead in the volume, it's not possible to control because it's two to one. No, it's this of three structure. Then mesh quality parameters. So again, there are many of them. The most important one, no orthogonality, internal skewness, and then some extra options to save some information for debugging or visualization. So this is how it works. Okay. Later, we're going to open the case talking about you no, know, this not controls. These are the recommended values, the ones that I use most of the time. If I don't get satisfactory results, I go and I improve and use improved values. You now, so as you see, usually they increase the number of iterations you now. So it will be more time consuming. Not necessarily you're going to get better meshes, but most of the time it works. But I always start like this. I think it works 90% of the time then that 10% is tricky geometry. So I increase this one, but it's not only increasing the iterations, 
probably you need to increase refinement level, development, modify something a little bit in the geometry and so on. So I'm talking about these improved values, how you can move and so on. Then also this auction resolve features. This is the one that controls the curvature and intersection. So later we're going to get a better feeling how to control this one, but this is an important auction. And in boundary layers, probably the most important ones are these two. So usually these are my default values. If I'm getting into problems, okay, very specific problems, I go and do like this. So basically, uh, this is the Wolf Dynamics logo. So look at how you have all our files, the snappy X mesh. Remember, you set up everything here. You capture the sharp, sharp angles. You have the mesh quality in a different file, but you can put it here. Block mesh to generate the background mesh, and then your STL, and these are your sharp angles. And we're going to work on that. Okay, so. This is on the steps. Okay, later we're going to do it. I want to go this one that is very important that you generate the mesh and there is this file, constant polymesh boundary. Here's where you save all the boundary information. So when you generate your mesh, for instance, if you're using block mesh, I create this block, these faces with this name. And it's very important. Remember, you do the simulation, you need to define those faces. Otherwise, you cannot define boundary conditions. So in this fail, a file you have all that information that exists if you already you know give a name in block mesh or you convert the mesh don't worry if this is confusing when we do the hands on you will understand better so basically what i want to say here that of this information please do not modify these keywords or actually you can modify this one if you know precisely what you're doing sometimes i, I can do it i know what i'm doing Okay, but be careful about that. Of this, you can change this, the name. Okay, so here you call it, I call it min x. Probably after you do the mesh, you go and call it inlet, outlet, and so on. So the name can be changed and also the type. Okay, so the type here, this is a specific wall, so you can change between wall, patch, then you have symmetry and so on. But the most common one are wall and patch. Okay, empty for 2D cases, so we're going to address all that stuff. Okay, so see patch is can be any boundary conditions, no Dirlesh, Newman, and so on. No gradient base wall is a specific wall, a slip wall, a no slip wall, and then you can have symmetry and so on. So this is how it works. Then also, well, just to mention that you can clean everything like this. So this is the basic about mesh generation, open phone, as I mentioned, just theory a little bit to get you familiar. So hopefully soon we're going to start to generate meshes but okay my final words here do not get intimidated no by the fact that there are many keywords we're going to work with the most basic ones okay i'm going to show, i'm going to show you my standard practices so thank you very very much for your attention see you in the next video bye